Hi, welcome to Pin Cut Sew. My name is Nikki, and I'm going to talk about something a little bit different today for this channel. I've been kind of focused on dolls and quilting and crafty sewing, but I actually also sew quite a bit of my own clothing, especially in the spring and summer. I am much less inspired to sew winter and, well, winter clothes. <laughs> because winter is not very inspiring, but I've been wanting to make some spring clothes and things were not working out. And so instead, I pulled out some of my vintage patterns and I finally just admitted that I prefer the old to the new when it comes to sewing patterns. Today I'm going to talk about why. I'm going to talk about how you can get your hands on some vintage sewing patterns, how to actually use them, should you cut them or should you not cut them. Big source of debate in the sewing world sometimes. And also some differences between them and newer patterns and stuff like that. So let's chat. <music> So last year on Facebook Marketplace, I got my hands on a giant haul of vintage sewing patterns. They all came from the same lady. She was just sort of offloading them. Um, so I got them for some insane price, like $25 for the entire, entire stash. And it was several huge boxes just jammed full of vintage sewing patterns from, most of them were from the 60s and 70s, and then some from the 80s up to the 90s. So. Nowadays, I just read that vintage is considered anything 20 years old or older. But for my purposes today here, I'm just talking about mostly patterns from the 60s, maybe some 50s, through probably the 90s. So I kept several, I kept a lot of those patterns. I couldn't, I definitely couldn't keep them all. I move a lot, I'm not really much of a keeper. But I kept the ones that I saw myself making that were lines I would actually wear and that were in my size. Luckily, this woman who got rid of them must have been the same size as me. And then the ones that weren't my size happened to be the size of my daughters who I sew for sometimes. Especially, they especially love vintage design. So, but now I definitely wish I would have kept more of them because now I'm realizing that vintage patterns were just sort of made on another level than they're making patterns now today. So I told you that I was I had been trying to make some spring tops. I had some nice fabrics and I kept trying patterns that just weren't working out. I always, always have a lot of pooling fabric in the back of things. Um, I almost always have to raise the armholes or make a full bust adjustment. I just end up having to make so many changes for something I'm barely happy with in the end. So after a couple of fails, I pulled out a vintage 70s pattern. This one. Isn't it cute? Let me see a little focus. And I made a muslin of it, like a practice garment, and it looked perfect. It was so cute. I didn't have to make any changes to it at all. The length was perfect. The waistline hit me at the right spot. The back didn't have extra fabric, and the armholes were high enough. So I was like, hmm, this is weird because this is the second time this has happened to me. My husband and I went to a 70s party, a murder mystery party, and I did guess the murderer correctly, I'll have you know. And I pulled out one of these 70s patterns and I made it up and I think at the thrift store I found a polyester double knit from the 70s and I just cut whatever garment that was up and I made this 70s dress and again it fit perfectly. So I feel like I'm onto something maybe with the vintage patterns and I kind of wanted to discuss why that might be. Why did they fit me better? Were they made better? I'm not sure. So I know that everybody is different. Sometimes some pattern brands will fit people right out of the envelope and not fit others. And some people have to make the same adjustment over and over. And of course there are some things that I always adjust patterns for, for my own body, but it's crazy to me that I'm pulling out these old patterns and everything fits perfectly. And so I can't really speak to the pattern companies. I haven't actually spoken to them about this. Maybe I should, but I can speculate that along with the changing of American bodies, um, they have sort of adjusted for things. More room around the middle section, for example. Um, also, we don't wear the same undergarments that they wore back then, so that might have something to do with it too, where like where our, where the average bust line sits, um, the width of the average waistline now in America. By the way, I am speaking about what's known as the big four American pattern companies, Butterick McCall's, Simplicity, and Vogue. And they sort of are an umbrella for other smaller brands, but they, they're they the ones that I'm talking about and all my vintage patterns come from those four brands. So I don't know the reasons why 
but I do know that the vintage pattern blocks just seem to fit my body better than the modern ones. And so if I have access to the old ones, I think I'm just gonna start going to my vintage pattern drawer first before I look in my modern pattern drawer. <laughs> Okay, so let's talk about where to find vintage patterns, if you want to find some. You can always, always check your thrift stores and even antique stores. I took my daughter antiquing with some friends last weekend, and I just got the time to shop by myself, and I found, I thought I got this one there. It was like, it was packaged with another one, and it was $3. So always check your antique stores and thrift stores. A lot of times thrift stores will bag several patterns together. And so you can get several of them, even if you can only see the ones on the inside, I mean on the outsides. <laughs> it's kind of annoying, but that's always a good place to check. And then, of course, places like, or websites like Facebook Marketplace, like where I got mine, Craigslist, offer up the free cycle pages, things like that, are a good place if you want to get them locally. And a lot of times those are being sold by either estates or individuals who don't realize really what they have, I guess. So they're not aware that people... Are really scrambling to find these vintage patterns because to them they're just a box of old patterns so a lot of times you can get them for a really good price if you find them locally on facebook marketplace like i did other options especially if you're looking for a specific pattern like say you've seen someone make it up on instagram or whatever you can search that exact pattern number on etsy and even amazon a lot of the times definitely ebay too i'm not an ebay shopper really but i know you can find things on ebay if you're looking for something really specific those are also places to get like a large lot of vintage patterns too. Like on Etsy, you can just search vintage sewing patterns and you'll see several in one listing. So that's a good way to get your stash started for sure. Okay, next, ask your grandma. Also ask your friend's grandmas because chances are if a word gets around that you sew, then somebody and somebody's grandma might have a stash in their basement collecting dust, gathering mouse poop, just waiting for you to take it up. Okay, also, the big four pattern companies have been reproducing some of their older patterns. So you can still buy some of these old patterns at the store because they've updated them. I do think, from what I could tell, I looked at the instructions from some of mine, they have updated things like, like back in the 50s, they didn't use invisible zippers very much, but now they do include those in the patterns. Or things like when I sewed this old, this old pattern, it called for interfacing that you sew in, and obviously now we would use iron in interfacing and so those old patterns do account for those modern updates to things otherwise i think they're pretty much the same they haven't altered them for things like um the girdles and things they used to wear in the 50s so keep that in mind but we'll talk more about that in a minute okay one of the great things about vintage patterns is sizing so now we're going to talk about sewing with these old patterns and you might think that your size may be totally different than the modern patterns that you sew but that's really not true because while the ready to wear sizing has evolved so much over time, what we call vanity sizing, I'm sure you've all heard of that, pattern companies have stayed the same. And so it's really, really nice to be able to, like these are all a size 12 and I sew a straight size 12 and I still sew a size 12 in the patterns, the modern patterns that I make too. So if you're totally unfamiliar with pattern sizing, sort of a good rule of thumb I tell people is to sew two sizes bigger or start with two, th two sizes bigger than you buy at the store. So like I'm uh, off the rack, I'm usually a size eight and so I always sew a size 12. Sometimes I grade up to a 14 in the lower half, but that's always a good starting point. I think one of the big mistakes new sewers make is that they assume their pattern size is the same as their ready to wear size and then they cut it out and it's too small. And so. Keep that in mind if you're brand new to pattern sewing. While pattern sizing hasn't changed very much, undergarments certainly have. I've touched on this just a little bit, but even just bra styles over the decades have changed so much. So keep in mind that some of these old patterns were drafted like in the 60s when they had the very pointy bras, things like that. And then in the 50s when they wore girdles. So busts and waists especially were just emphasized in different ways than they are today and they changed pretty consistently from decade to decade so that is something you might have to adjust for if you're buying vintage patterns especially the older you get when they were still well they were smaller waisted in general but they also wore undergarments that brought it in even more and so those patterns were made for that kind of undergarment okay the big debate to cut or not to cut your vintage patterns I know that some people just buy vintage patterns to simply collect them. They look cool, they look for ones that are in nice shape, and they just keep them, they don't cut them. If they do use them, they trace them onto pattern paper or tracing paper or whatever. 
I do not do that. I cut my patterns. Don't come after me <laughs> if you're a pattern purist. But I always have been a pattern cutter, especially like modern patterns. We Here in the US, we can get them for a dollar or two. So I never felt like it was worth tracing off the pattern, taking extra time when I can just buy another version of it. So if I wanted to make that size a different size for my daughter, I could just buy another pattern. It's not the big of a deal. I know I can't do that with these vintage patterns, but one cool thing is that most of them come in only one size anyway. So I'm not cutting off any sizes by just cutting out my size. It only comes in the one size. Also, a lot of the ones I have are not in mint condition anyway. You can see I put this in a bag because it was falling apart. <laughs> And a lot of the ones I have are already pre-cut because the person I bought them from used them and loved them. And I would like to think that she's happy that I'm using them and loving them too. So consider this permission to cut into the patterns if you want to. If you're the person who wants to trace them off and keep them in a mint condition, you go right ahead. Okay, my next tip for sewing with vintage patterns is to always make a muslin. A muslin is just a practice garment. I think in England y'all call it a toile. Um, and some people call it a mock-up, but I have a whole article about why this is important on my blog that I'll link it to you. I'll link you to in the notes below. But it's just so important before you cut into your nice fabric to make a muslin, especially knowing that there were fitting differences back then in the older decades than there are today. And you don't want to waste nice fabric on something that doesn't end up fitting you right, that you could have prevented just by making a practice garment. You don't have to make the whole garment. You can just make parts of it and baste it together. Like recently I made a dress. I only did the bodice. I knew the skirt would fit, so I only cut out the bodice of some scrap rayon fabric I had and I cut out one sleeve and I just slapped it together and made sure that it would fit. <laughs> you can get old fabric for this at the thrift store or sheets or anything like that. You can even get jersey sheets if you're making a stretch pattern. Okay, next, understand fabric content. This especially applies to things to patterns made in the 70s. In the 70s, they wore a lot of polyester double knit. So sometimes on the cover, things will look like it's made for wovens and it's actually made for polyester double knit or things say they're for knits, but the knits we use today are gen generally a lot more stretchy than a polyester double knit would be. So you sort of have to understand that, that some knits might be too stretchy for the knit patterns and some wovens are just not stretchy enough. So sort of beware. It's another reason to make a muslin. On the other hand, there were some fabrics they did not have back when some of these patterns were being made. My favorite fabric to sew with is rayon. By the way, I am wearing the shirt now that I made with this pattern. And this is made out of rayon. I had scraps, so I combined this floral with this stripe, and this is my favorite shirt. I think it's so cute. But rayon fabric is one of my absolute favorites to wear because it's so breathable, but it is newer. And so some of these, fa these patterns, especially from the 50s, um, or 60s that were made, made to be more poofy dresses that would have been worn with a crinoline underneath. You can use a rayon and get a different look and it won't look as costumey, I don't think. So I made my, my daughter an Easter dress a few years ago and it was using one of the reproduced patterns for this really cute design. I made it fit her perfectly and we used a rayon fabric so it didn't look like it had such a poofy skirt. She didn't want it to look like a, you know, she was cosplaying for Easter, some 50s girl. <laughs> And it worked beautifully, so just like you have to be aware of which fabrics work for which patterns, you can also use some modern fabrics that they didn't have back then to sew up these patterns for kind of a different, more modern look. Okay, let's talk about actually reading these patterns. They're really not a whole lot different from modern patterns. I do, however, think they assume a little bit more knowledge on the part of the seamstress than modern patterns do, and that's just to be expected because almost everybody knew how to sew back then. And so they might assume that you know more than the modern patterns include, like modern patterns will include very basic instructions, especially at the beginning of the pattern, whereas these older patterns don't. So if you do, if you are new to pattern reading though, you can read a whole series I have on how to read a sewing pattern on my blog. I will link you to that one too. And that will get you started. But really the terminology and everything has really stayed pretty much the same, which is great. Okay, once you have some vintage patterns, let's talk about how to preserve them. There's a few ways to do this. I like these bags. You can buy comic book bags. I'll link you to some of these um, because they're like this one's kind of small. It fits these old patterns, but it doesn't fit some of the newer ones. Whereas a comic book bag is slightly larger, so it fits newer patterns. And I put this one in here because it was falling apart and I didn't want any pieces to get lost. There's not even enough there left there for me to tape it. So I put it in this bag. So you can buy these bags to keep your patterns in. 
My mom likes to keep patterns in bags because she's really terrible at refolding the pattern pieces. <laughs> she just likes to stuff them in a bigger bag anyway. It's kind of funny. You can also buy frames. Again, comic book frames work really well if you want to display some of these patterns because some of them are just really cool. At the end of this video, I'm going to show you some of the coolest ones that I have still in my collection. I'm really kicking myself for not keeping more of the wedding dress patterns because some of them, even just the artwork alone is so cool. So some of them I did keep just for the artwork on the front and I have them like hanging on my pin board or places around my sewing room just because they're fun to look at. So in conclusion, I think that collecting vintage sewing patterns is really, really fun. If you just want to look at them, that's great, but also just to be using them. It's also really interesting to me how little fashion has actually changed over the decades, especially from the 60s on up. Like, I have a wrap skirt pattern from three different decades, and it literally is the same exact wrap skirt. I did make one from a 70s pattern, but it's a pattern and design that's still being sold today with very little changed about it. And so when I look at these patterns for a button down, it's really the same lines, like collar shapes will change and, you know, sleeve poofs will come and go. But women have been wearing the same designs for many decades now. So if you have your heart set on something to make and you're not having any luck with modern patterns, kind of like me, try looking for some vintage ones and see what happens. I hope you all have enjoyed this. I'll see y'all soon. Bye. Mm -hmm.